The Neolithic farmers of Barsin, Turkey, offer a fascinating window into the early stages of human agriculture and settlement. They cultivated crops like wheat, barley, and legumes, and domesticated animals such as sheep, goats, and cattle. While the exact social structure of these early farming communities is debated, evidence suggests a relatively complex society with division of labor and specialized tasks. Genetic studies have shown that the Neolithic farmers of Anatolia, including those from Barsin, were largely descended from hunter-gatherers who lived in the region prior to the adoption of agriculture. This suggests that agriculture was developed locally rather than being introduced by migrating populations. The Neolithic farmers of Barsin, like their contemporaries in other parts of the world, developed a range of tools essential for their agricultural and domestic activities. These tools were primarily made from stone, bone, and wood. The pottery found at Barsin Hoyuk includes both hand-built and wheel-thrown vessels. These vessels were often decorated with simple patterns, such as incised lines or stamped designs. The shapes and sizes of the pottery vessels suggest that they were used for a variety of purposes, such as cooking, storing grains, and serving food. The discovery of small figurines, animal bones, and other symbolic objects at Barsin Hoyuk may indicate the existence of religious or spiritual beliefs tied to natural objects. For this video, I gathered the raw genomes of 21 Anatolian Neolithic farmers from Barsin. I used my trait predictor tool to analyze these genomes and generate health, traits, and phenotype reports for these ancient peoples. Links to purchase my trait predictor executable as well as the 21 files will be in the description of the video. The most common predicted phenotypes were Mediterranean, Pamarid, Stranded, and Alpinate, although Nordic phenotype and Indian phenotype was also present. The most common eye colors were brown and hazel, but two samples scored dark brown and one sample scored blue eyes as well. The most common hair color was black, with a minority of samples having dark brown and dark blonde hair. The most common skin color was olive, with a significant minority scoring white and light brown skin. The most common hair texture was wavy, but straight and curly hair was also common. One sample scored kinky hair as its predicted hair texture. Most samples were predicted to have Greek nose shapes. 14 of them were predicted to be shorter, and 7 of them were predicted to be taller than average. The samples had roughly equal predisposition to warrior and warrior phenotype with five samples being predicted to be warriors and four samples warriors. The samples had a strong predisposition to lower availability of D2 receptor sites, which leads to higher affinity to no-go learning and lower risk of schizophrenia. The samples had a predisposition to lower odds of bipolar one, and one of the samples carried APO risk variants for Alzheimer's. The samples had a moderately high predisposition to depression. The samples had a very strong predisposition to male pattern hair loss, which is typical of West Eurasians. The samples had a roughly average predisposition to ADHD. The samples had a high predisposition to autism. The samples had a predisposition to very low odds of gout, which is good. The samples had an average predisposition to age-related macular degeneration, and none of them were predicted to be lactase persistent. The Barson farmers were predisposed to a lower level of empathy based on OXDR genotypes. The Barson farmers had average odds of cardiovascular issues and average homocysteine levels. Regarding muscle type genotypes in ACTN3, the Barson farmers' genotype distribution closely resembles that of Europeans, indicating their athletic performance was likely comparable to us. The Barson farmers had a very high predisposition to alcohol dependence. The Barson farmers had lower odds of epithelial cancers based on 8Q24 genotypes. They also had very low odds of autoimmune disease based on HLA genotypes. Only one of them carried HLA DRB1 risk variants for multiple sclerosis. They mostly had average predisposition to type 1 diabetes, which is low by European standards. They did have a predisposition to hemoglobin E disease with 10 out of 21 people being carriers, which is higher than the rate in other populations I've analyzed. 11 samples were predicted to have shorter telomere lengths, and 9 samples were predicted to have longer telomere lengths. Two of the 21 samples had very high iron levels indicative of possible hemochromatosis predisposition. 16 samples had lower, and 5 samples had higher red blood cell count. The Barson samples were strongly predisposed to a higher level of glucose, which is bad. 
They were also strongly predisposed to a high level of LDL cholesterol, which is once again bad for cardiovascular health. They had average levels of vitamin D as a whole. The Barson farmers had lower odds of syncope. The most common blood type among the Barson farmers was O, but type A was also very common, and three samples had blood type B, and one sample had blood type AB. Thank you for watching until the end. Don't forget to leave a like and share the video if you enjoyed it. Goodbye.